Good morning, all of you. Today, let us have a next lectures on river equilibriums, in which we'll talk about the next part of the river equilibriums. Is that we'll revisit regime relationship. We'll talk about downstream hydraulic geometry and river meandering, and also the basic concept to the advanced levels. How the river equilibrium constant. Uh, concept has evolved with the time that is what I will today I am going to present you. So, uh, if you look at the next part it is very interesting that uh, I have uh, taken a new book concept which is a river training and protection work for railway bridges by Indian Railways of Institute of Civil Engineers which is published in 2016. Uh, we will have uh, some cross reference of this book. Uh, about uh, uh, Indian knowledge about uh, river equilibriums, river morphology, uh, that the uh, concept uh, river characterization, uh, regionalizations of river characterizations, uh, the, these are the things are very detailed is given in this book and I am going to follow this book as well as uh, P. Y. Julian books as you know it. Uh, many of the study has been done for the university of uh, uh, many have, uh, study has been done for the uh, river Mississippi and lot of experience on the Mississippi rivers and elsewhere. The combinations of both I am going to deliver the lectures for you. Uh, now, we have created the concept. If I liquid the river has a n number of degree of freedoms that means, we can visualize the rivers has the n number of degree of freedoms in terms of flow variables, in terms of sediment variables, in terms of meander channels, the river band, it has uh, the variability. So, how do we do it? We start doing the, the river survey. So, we look it to the river survey, which earlier used to go to the field, conduct the river survey, measure the velocity depth, width, uh, perimeters, uh, discharge, uh, sometimes maybe the bed sea stress, bed material movements, all we can sediment load, the bed load part we can measure it. Also they use the satellite imageries to know it the band characteristics in terms of the river band length, meander width, the radius of curvatures and what would be the lambda, the streamline deviations in the river band, the sediment characteristics like D s, the sealed number, sediment concentrations all either you can put direct uh, uh, measured directly in the river or we can estimate from uh, other data when you have that. So, the definitely the river survey plays a major role to find out the river the variables in terms of flow variables, sediment variables and the meander variables. That that is what uh, we get it data and if you look at the in terms of degree of freedoms what are there in the flow that the discharge, width, flow depth, velocity, perimeters, slope okay. and also the for the river band you can have a streamlines deviations. For the sediment part we can have particle size issues, value, sealed number, sediment and concentrations, the meander length, width, radius of curvatures. So, we can get a large number of data if I do the river survey using go to the field, collect the data or we can use a satellite imageries to estimate some of these characteristics from satellite data. Nowadays, you know it, it is quite easy to get the satellite data as a so Google Earth movers are uh, Google Earth is there and many others uh, satellite data providers are giving a free data set to characterize in the river in terms of this. Now, if you look at that what did they do it? The basically targeting the regionalizations. Can we establish the relationship between independent and dependent variables? Okay. Anyway, you can expect it that the independent variable like discharge, the d x and the sealed numbers can be the independent more than that we do not know it. 
So, that way we, if you look it by just uh, looking this data, so discharge which is easy to measure it and you can have a DS value, you can have a tau star, the sealed numbers and we can try to look it whether we can establish the relations with other dependent variable like flow width, depth, the velocity, the perimeters or the sediment concentrations or we are looking at what could be the meander landform in terms of radius of curvature, in terms of the length, width, whether you can have established the relationship there. And the question comes that can you obtain a statistically significant relationship among the flow variable, sediment variable, meander dimensions at a regional or the global scales. If I talk about the regional scale, can you develop the relationship for the Ganga, Brahmaputra, Magna systems? Can you develop the relationship for the peninsular rivers? Or can you develop a relationship which can go, hold good for at the global scales? So, all these bigger questions mark people, lot of research has been going on to find out whether they are regional. What you generally do it, the regionalizations, if I summarize that, the basically it is a data mining concept. This is data mining concept, people nowadays talk so much, ok. So, data mining concept, you have a huge data measurement of the flow variable, sediment variable, the metering characteristics at different part of the rivers, different rivers at different time intervals, at the equilibrium stage, the stage where the banks are quite stable, okay. Or the, the there is not a significant order of change is happening. It if you look at that part, we can establish the relationship using the data mining concept, okay. Very basic is correlations analysis, visual 3D plots. There are a lot of data mining algorithms nowadays available, and those things we can integrate it and evaluate the relationship. What it happens? What is the known empirical relationship with us? Lacy's equations, we will talk about that. Lenz equations, 1955, 1929, SCOMS, 1963, all these relationship I will talk about. Leopold relationship, 1964. So, these are the relationships we got it after doing a data mining of a huge data what we collected from the river level at the reach levels at the different part of the world. And we try to integrate it either at the regional scale or the global scales, try to look at whether we can establish empirical relationship between dependent variables and the independent variables of a river systems. If you look at that, what the try to look at that this river is behaves differently, uh, there is a concept of equil equilibrium concept is there, which is a lens concept or the Lacy's equations concept will come it. Variational problems also there, they consider is a minimize the energy dissipation concept follows through the variations is the Julian 1985. The large scale ADs concept, nowadays uh, people are talking about all these forces, what it happens it that due to the extreme flood events, it creates a large scale eddies, the turbulent structures what we discuss uh, previous classes that that structure is a responsible to have a formation of that. So, that is the reasons there are the large scale ED concept which is uh, LN and this D -Sable. Recently, we also introduced an entropy concept for the river morphology, which you can follow it and some of the papers also will discuss in the next class that how we are, we have brought it a concept of entropy into the river morphology analysis. That what we will discuss it, but if you look it as, uh, look at it as a summary, what we are understanding that we need to have a river survey we should have a quality river survey data, that is what is matter to us. If data is not a, having a quality data, we can land up with empirical equations which are not statistically significant. 
we should identify the variables, flow variables, sediment variables, meandering characteristics and much more. We can look it recently there are a lot of data mining algorithms are there and the correlations visual three dimensional plots which are there nowadays any uh, spreadsheets, uh, Microsoft spreadsheet and you can establish the empirical relationship what we got in almost 70 years back those things you can look at but there are new concepts which is are coming it starting from equilibrium to entropy that is the basic idea when you do a empirical relationship. So, try to understand it the empirical relationship of a river systems talks about the river behaviors which we do not understand at the particular time scale or the spatial scale that is the idea is if it is there is a empirical equations. Let us I revisit it Lacy's equations. Again I want to revisit this uh, Lacy's equations for you to uh, because this is the equations we so frequently we have been using it uh, river protections work. So, Lacy's equations if you look at that it identified the basically the velocities area the hydraulic radius and the p which is the which are dependent variables is a functions of discharge and silt factors. The silt factor is a functions of particle size d 50 value functions of particle size distribution. So, this is a silt factors okay. and these are all conducting a series of experimental data from the canals in Indian subcontinent undivided Indian subcontinent. Okay. So, if you look at that if you look at this Lacy's formula was used widely used it and it has still has a strength like many equations. Uh, it has represent the lumped response of a equilibrium reach of the river or the straight reach of the rivers where the dependent variables like the velocity, hydraulic radius, area, perimeter and the slope is a functional of q and f 1, q is discharge, f 1 is the silt factors, it is just a data mining concept. The equation has not come up just like that, they have done thorough analysis of the data using way back in 1929 so, okay we didn't have a much computer that time so, okay but this is a data analysis concept there's the same concept we are using it with supercomputers now but there is a data analysis concept where it has established the relationship between dependent variables and the independent variables independent variables here define as about the sediment transport the d50 values and the discharge the q representations and that what you have uh, the velocities, hydraulic radius, area and the parameters. So, just you look at the velocities depends upon for equilibrium channels as a q as a power relationship with 1 by 6 okay? and there is a factors f 1 factors are there which is 1 by 3. Same way if you look at that hydraulic uh, radius has this the coefficients. If you look at this, most of the coefficients are simplified in terms of 1 by 6, 1 by 3, 5 by 3, or 1 by 2. That's basically the perimeters representing q to the power half. It is just too easy to remember it. The p is equal to 2.66 q to the power half. It is very easy. If you look at this equations what we rewrite it the p is equal to the perimeters is equal to weighted perimeters is equal to 2.66 times of discharge square root of discharge. Okay. So, that means it is just depend upon the flow. So, the perimeter of the river weighted perimeter of f equilibrium channels it depends upon your only the discharge value only the discharge value. So, if you look at that and that what is a power of 1 by 2 0 
square root of this. If this very wide river, okay, the p will be close to the width of the rivers. So, that means for a wide river like a Brahmaputra or Ganges, the width is a just a function of the discharge, that is all. It does not depend upon the particle size. So, how can it happen? It, but it is the relationship after doing the data mining. We do not know it because these are the data, the canal level data is collected from the field levels, then done the statistical analysis like the meaning equation, the Lacy's equation has a lot of strength. And if you look at that part, the same way for the velocity, the hydraulic radius will be for a wide rivers, it will be close to the flow depth. So, that means the flow depth has a function of q and f and this having a function of q 1 by third and f 1 minus 1 by third. See if you try to understand it, how these functions has come up. And the, these are data mining after doing it so called two days we talk about data mining concept similar way they collected data, they did the outlayer analysis, they did visually all these equations fittings and then they try to bring it the relationship which might have taken few years to bring this equation. It is not a few days like what we have a now computing facilities with uh, Microsoft Excel spreadsheet or uh, any statistical tools. There was no tools, no computers, but how they derive this concept through the data mining, okay, collecting relevant data, conducting all these things and this is still holds coded, still in India because it is a regional equations, it is quite valid for the Ganges, the Brahmaputra alluvial systems, we use these equations as it being developed for a regional scale. Let we will discuss much more about this when you go for next levels of regional equations. Uh, now, if you look at the next part, when how you define it is the bank full discharge. If you look at that, you can have a reverse like this where you have a the floodings and that is that bank is not at all having any levy. But there will be the conditions that levy within a both the banks, okay, because the water will flow it during the flood, uh, floods, both the banks. If it does not flow those both the banks, then you will have a outer bank leaves or if you have a leaves on the both the banks, okay, this is a natural levy, okay. Natural levy for processes are there, no levy, natural levy process in the both the banks and the outer bank leaves. So, if these the conditions, now we have to look at what is the bank flow discharge. The natural leaves resultant from deposition of courses of the suspended loads on the plot plane adjacent to the channels, that is what it happens. It when extreme flood events comes, the flood of 2 years, 5 years return period, the most of the water goes to the flood plane area. As it goes to the flood plane area, thus also it goes with the sediment loads and that sediment start the depositing. And because of that depositions, it creates a natural embankment, that is what is called natural levy. It could be a both on the bank or outer bank or there is no levy formations. Now, if you look at that, we also call about dominate discharge because the single discharge may not represent it that it depends upon sufficient magnitudes and frequency to determine the dimension geometry of a alluvial channels. Just time to repeat it. The dominate discharge is that the sufficient magnitudes and frequency, the occurrence okay, to determine the dimension and geometry of alluvial channels. Okay. Uh, in this lecture, so we are not going more detail about dominate discharge, but uh, the hydraulic geometry relationship, the dominate discharge is taken to 
bank full discharge, which is having a return periods about 1.5 years, that is what is there. So, that means the bank full discharge by conducting a thorough analysis it is found to be a 1.5 return period flawed discharge. What does it indicate? It indicates is that if it is a bank full discharge happens in the return period of 1.5 years that every 2 years we are supposed to be in a natural reverse we should have a flood in the flood bank plan. Every 2 years intervals you should have that is why it is the nature of the flow. We should have the floods on the flood plains. So, when you do the embankments you try to understand what we have to been doing it because we are confining the rivers and as we confine the rivers you know that how the sediments has happened. But naturally the river creates its a flood plains and the flood plain inundation happens at a rate of a 2 year return periods. That means, every 2 years if we are living in the flood plain if a river adds as it a natural conditions we should expect one flood event. So, if you look at that that is what the natural conditions, but as we modify the conditions that is what we should try to understand what we are doing it. But the naturally what it shows that the bank pool discharge is equal to 1.5 return period flow. That means, 2 year return period flow uh, flood in a reverse it is supposed to inundate it the flood plain area. Supposed to inundate the flood plain area 3 years, 5 years and 20 years no doubt it will be inundated more larger area. So, this concept can help us to understand how things are happening it at the reverse scales and that is what is a regionalization idea that uh, it has a return period of 1.5 years, but no doubt we should do a regional studies to find out whether it is a 1.5 years or 2 years for Brahmaputra river or Ganges or the peninsular rivers those research studies to be done it to look at what is happening it whether it is 1.5 year return period that is ok for us. Now, if you look it, if I go for next levels, uh, we try to look at the relationship. The basic relationship again, you will look at a simple continuity equations and the flow resistance equations. Okay. Uh, if you look at this simple continuity equations, which is the discharge is area into the velocity, here the W is a width, W is width of the river and A stands is a flow depth, V is the velocity, then you will have a the discharge into W H P, so area into velocity. Okay. But if you look at it, the flow resistance equations okay, which takes care of all the near boundary, near bed turbulent structures and all, we can establish a relationship with a velocity with H by D S. So, that means, d s indicating for us if it is a river bed these are the river bed uh, h is the flow depth and d s is the particle size ok. If you look at the stones or boulders are there for hilly rivers you are looking a submerged relative submergence h by d x to the power power exponent of m which also depend upon h by d s. Okay. It depends upon the relationship between this okay, with, whether it is a submerged how what is the it is h is much much larger than d s this values will be the larger value is a less you will have a these things. Just you look at the relative submergence is value indicating first. Then if we have the slope you have a flow depth then you have a the coefficients uh, indicating for us the resistance flow. So, we have uh, the continuity equations, we have the 
assuming the velocity is going on as a flow resistance equations you can have this c and this power exponent m is depends upon relative submergence. Banks are the non cohesive materials which is too easy to have a uh, simplifications. No alluvial rivers is a full of the sands, it is a mixture of silt, clay and uh, compositions of that. But it is okay if we consider a non cohesive materials as we discussed earlier we can define a sealed numbers which are functions of two components. One is the downstream shear force and weight, pa weight of the fluid sediment particles that is what is the sealed numbers or sealed shear stress we talk about okay. that is what we discussed earlier. Now, we try to have a, a relationship that is what is uh, look at uh, that. Uh, you, you know it these things the particles on the weighted parameters of alluvial channels if you are see that if tau star is less than critical shear stress and if it is more than that then you will have a have a motions okay it will start entering the motions and the rate of sediment transport increase with the sealed numbers. The sealed number primarily depends upon the flow depth okay because d s does not change it. The, G does not change it, so specific gravity does not change it, only this H and the S value. So, that is the reasons it is primarily depends upon the flow depth and vertical process of the aggradation degradation in alluvial channels. But if you have flow in a bands as we discussed earlier, there will be a centrifugal forces, there will be streamline deviations, okay, upper streamline deviations will be there, and those things if you relate the relationship you will get it again h by d s summers relative summers depth h by w w is a width h is the flow depth. So, that ratio and it has a de depending upon the b r ratio which is a constant for us. So, if you look at that how the flow variables are coming it. So, if you look at all these things the dependent variables primary dependent variable is considered is discharge d s representing of the bed center and the tau star the sealed numbers indicating that a ratio between the two forces one is a shear forces by the weight of the sediment particles. So, these three consider as independent variables and others we are talking about and the uh, Julian 1988 establishes that variability of other parameters a uh, relatively small ok that is the their data analysis and data their data mining concept what they got it uh, these are the three are primary uh, independent variable for uh, them to establish relations with the dependent variables. Now, if you look at the next part, it is a quite interesting which is given by Julian and Wargan 1995, the relationship between flow depth, width, the velocity and slope is a function of, now it is a higher version than the Lacy's equations, it is a function of q d s tau stars, q d s and tau stars it is a function and the power exponent is depends upon m value ok. Power exponent is depend upon the m value. So, m is a resistance coefficient which also have a relationship with relative submergence depth ok. So, as compared to the lazy equations now we are going more details ok which is now not only depends upon only the q and d s it depends upon the sealed numbers, it also depends upon a power exponent like in earlier case we have a width is equal to 2.66 q into half ok, q into half. So, width of the river we, but in this case the width of the rivers has a 2 m plus 1, 3 m plus 2 plus there is a function of d x and tau stars ok. As we do a data mining advanced data mining concept we suppose refine the equations we get it 
more independent parameters as compared to the Lacy's equations. So, if you look at that, we have uh, this part which is are uh, indicating for us and S is a friction slope what we have or the energy gradient okay? and the flow velocities, Q is a dominant discharge in cubic meters per feet, DS is a D15 in meters and sealed numbers, tau stars and the resistance there. So, what they did it, uh, they established these equations, then they have a, a relationship between major and predicted. So, that is the reason so when you develop a regional scale things, you see to have a huge data set. Okay. That is what is a statistical analysis. If you look at this is a measured one versus a predict for the flow width. So, if it is follow in a 1 is to 1 line, it is a perfect, but it does not happen for a river database is predictions and uh, measures should not have a 1 is to 1 because that is the natural variability is there, but their equation is perfect and that is what is they have uh, the, the prediction and the width in a meters width from 1 meter to 1000 meters. Okay. 1 meter to 1000 meters. It is 1 meter river width to go to 1000 meters, still you can have a relationship of width in terms of discharge, ds and tau stars and it can follow these functions and it also showing this statistical significance band. The same way flow depth which varies from 10 minus 2 to 10 my to the power 200 meters. Okay. Whenever you see the data in a river case, please try to interpret, then you can have a interesting knowledge about the rivers. These uh, river speaks out the truth through this data. So, we, we should interpret the data more extensively, look at the range. The measured is a 10 minus 2, which is a centimeter levels, goes to the 100 meter, meter and most of the rivers are in this range. Okay. Most of the rivers are up to 10 meters or the 12 meters, not more than that. Uh, and that data set, its false is here and which is a predicted range and that is the presence. So, with this, the A we, Julian Wedegaard's relationship in terms of flow depth, width and velocity and friction slope, we can, the velocity has a much more variabilities which is a meter per second is goes up to 10 meter per seconds. Okay. That is what is maximum velocity can happen it. Okay. This is a 1 meter per second and it can have a 4 meter, 5 meter per second. So, that is what I as I said it earlier, the maximum velocity you can design for a river training works. We look at interpreting this data, we can consider from this data as it is a measure, you can have a roughly 5 meter per second because we design for stream because many of the times in a river systems we do not have the data and we cannot wait for another 30 years to collect the data measure the velocity, but we can have interpret the knowledge about the rivers from elsewhere as a regional studies like as it is indicating here the river velocity which we need it many of the times it can go as high it is 5 meter per second or 7 meter per second, not more than that, okay. as the data recording is showing it, because we look for maximum and similar with the flow depth, depth also in this. Okay. And if you look at that way, the slope also if you look at the predicted and these things which is more statistically significant band, it is follow it as compared to velocity. So, it all says that how much of uncertainty is there from this scatter plot when you try to establish this relationship, the regional relationship in terms of flow depth, width, velocity, energy slope with respect to Q, DS and tau stars and these are the data is collected at the river levels, okay, at the field levels and with the comparisons with a major and predicts shows us that how good the relationship. If you look at these things, you can say that 
the velocity can have a lot of uncertainty in measurements uh, measurement and the predicted if you look at uh, this equation as well as the measurements part but in terms of depth and width and the slope we can have a not much that significant order of uncertainty is involved now if you look at uh, other very uh, interesting things are there if you look at this channel width okay this is very interesting figures if I, I plot it this side versus channel width okay which varies meter 10 minus 1 it is almost a centimeter levels the width can go to 10 to the power 5 that means almost a 10 kilometer width like Brahmaputra rivers okay like Brahmaputra rivers okay 10 kilometer width and it can have a 1 kilometers and it can go for to the 10 kilometers width okay so if you look at that part what is indicating your discharge if you look at that just look at the discharge 10 to the power 4 okay so that means discharge can go up to 10000 meter cube for a second this is a very good relationship and we can interpret a lot of things these are the data at the river river compiled all over the world plotting between channel width and the discharge so if you look at that if the width of the river is 1 kilometers it can go as high as 10000 meter cube per second which is normal for Brahmaputra rivers and if a width is increasing it up to 10 kilometers the discharge can go as a level of 10 times okay that means 0.1 millions or 1 lakh meter cube per second that that is the strength of the Brahmaputra rivers as we can see the width of the rivers and you just see the width of the rivers and we can know it approximate range of the discharge because these are the data is plotted for original river so if you have a 10 meter width you can say that you can have a in log log scale is a 10 meter cube per second so this is a very interesting data which is compiled in 1983 by Kelleran and Charles uh, for a river specialist the width of the river we can measure from satellite data and we can know it what could be the average discharge is flowing through that uh, that is this plot we can use it to know it estimated discharge ranges okay uh, that is what is a scale as I intentionally representing you try to interpret this data the discharge versus the channel width okay as its width varies from centimeters to go to 10 kilometers or 100 kilometers okay these are not possible okay so maximum range is 10 kilometers more than lesser than that and you have a discharge with the 10 to the power 5 meter cube per seconds okay 1 lakh meter cube per second so Brahmaputra discharge is 72,000 meter cube term maximum highest 100 year return period discharge it is much larger than that so if you look at that this data across the global level it indicates for us to interpret the knowledge the relationship between channel width and the discharge that is what if you look at that the average flow depth is h in meter surface width w and if you have average velocity v equilibrium slope if you establish is a function of q ds tau stars and if you use that m equal to 1 by 6 using this many equations these equations again you can modify it you will get a relationship approximate relationship between flow depth width velocity and the energy slopes and the energy solve which is a function of that but just trying to have a representing you that if you look at that the Lessig equations talk about the width is a a functions of a constant and functions of 1 by 2 that is okay is power function of 0 0.5 the same thing here is a 0 0.53 no doubt we improve the equations but more or less 
the power exponent of this relationship it remains more or less the same that is the things you can try to understand it with the different things. So, in time we are evolving regional river relationship, but more or less the power exponents are within the ranges ok. That is what is uh, Lacy's equation is 0.5 and where is the Julian equation is 0 0.53, so it is not significant difference. Not significant difference, but there is a tau star and ds is there which may have a slight bit difference is there. Now, if you look at the next level to interpret it or many of the times we if you know the discharge and d 50 value and we know the shield numbers at the beginning of the motions, can we compute the downstream hydraulic geometry. That means, we need to compute depth, width, the perimeters and the velocity and the slope. This side is known, d 50 is known to us. The problem is here, m is a function of d x okay, and the h, m is a function of relative submergence depth, which is a function of h by d x. So, that is the reasons we will assume a flow depth, compute the m value, then again you recheck it whatever the h values are coming are the same. In this case, we first resume the h equal to 1 meters, compute the m values, then you put the regional equations of that m value, compute the h. So, we found it the assumed values is 1 meter which is assume it, but estimated this that means, there is a lot of difference. So, we again heat and trial methods, we change the h value, compute m value, again you compute the h from the regional equations, whether that two difference are there or not there. If not there, then you can assume that uh, h value, that is the, uh, we do it. So, if you do it this repeatedly calculations of this till it converts the h equal to 1.49 m equal to 0 0.17 and which it gives h equal to 1.51 the difference is not much difference. If that is the conditions we can fix up that and then you can compute m equal to 0 0.172 flow depth or width velocity and the slope what we get it using this empirical equation. So, this is what we can use it uh, from d 50 values and all to compute is the flow width, the velocity and the energy slope gradients that is for this high downstream uh, hydraulic geometry. Now, if you look at very interesting part graphs which is uh, we uh, Many of the times we just uh, you to show it the Brahmaputra rivers, uh, one of the river where everything changes very fast, uh, river plan form, river geometry, sediment transports is a too dynamic. You can see this combined type of braided channels, ok. Nowadays it is not a difficult, any satellite imagery is uh, Google earth imagery is you can see it, how dynamic this from the rivers in terms of series of channels ok. In terms of series of channels what we have, it makes us is a very interesting part the how the channels are changing it ok. Still you have a challenging task to understand this rivers ok. Uh, in a sand bed uh, braided river systems in the walls over the wild this is a typical rivers and if you look at it how this progressive development of channels ok. If you look at that part. Uh, really it is indicating for us just try to interpret uh, these figures ok. Uh, you just check it this is the channels, there is a channels and there is a island formations. Next part you look at the channel is here, there are a lot of sand depositions, the islands are not there. Then further you commit these two channels are activated there are island again formatting in between that. 
and you go further again this is again channel formations all these things are happening again island formations are happening if you look at this time history lines of timelines of a river brahmaputra plan forms which is too dynamic and that's what is makes us to understand these spreader rivers whether does it follow any science or does it follow any energy dissipation concept all these are big questions okay so the basic idea is like if you look at that how the river has a dynamicness and how this cut off the island consequent the bank erosion process which is happens it so dynamically in brahmaputra rivers if you can look it these are quite interesting and quite challenging for us uh, now if you look at uh, how does formations happens as a bars in alluvial rivers if you look at that uh, the bars generally a large bed for uh, configurations in a alluvial bed deposits so if you look at that uh, if you have a this channels okay if you look at these figures the channels will not have a straight okay there will be a meanders okay because of these meanders you will have a bar formations okay these are called point bars alternative point bars and this is the thallic line the deepest channels this is the thallic line and you can have a alternate bar formations will be there and these bar formations can have a wave length can have a wave length which is a 2 pi times of channel width okay closely 7 uh, times okay or 3.6 times of width okay you just try to understand it okay the formations of alternative bars which is a 2 time of phi of w or we can say it as close to the 6 time of w okay don't go up to two precise okay so six times okay six times of width of channels you can see this the length from this to this points if you look at that length formations of uh, this wave length formations of alternating bar which is a as close to the six times of width of the uh, so that's what is accelerating part so if you look at that uh, there will be a high flow conditions that will be transport the stabilize with the vegetation grow from the islands as i showed the photograph of brahmaputra rivers it it's a proud number which is high in these channels okay and the silt parameter is a close to incipient motions the height of the bar can reach to the flow depth so height of bar can actually exposed into the higher levels that's the conditions can happen it now if you look at uh, this one very interesting if you look at this point bar formations again i into tell you to just sketch the figures to understand the river mechanics is that uh, if you have a river you will have a point bar formations okay point bar formations will be there there will be a pool there will be the point bar formations river crossing point will be there and if you take a cross section at a dash which is just a crossovers you can have a as close to the parabolic shape but when you have a near the thallic line uh, near this point bar you can see the depositions you can have a secondary current and you can have a deepest channels okay so as we discussed earlier so you can see that lot of sedimentary depositions happens it the formation induced by the secondary current that's what we Uh, try to show in many times how the secondary current formations are play the major roles inner bank will have a this uh, uh, point bars is found in the inner banks okay associated with the erosions of outer bank and lateral migrations of the rivers so river also have a lateral migrations and if you look at this part it also go for a cut off okay it will have a the cut off so then this island becomes the uh, mid by island mid channel point bars and then you can have uh, the cut offs okay the cut off shoot off will occur it and truncated the point bar also refers as a middle far okay so we can have uh, these conditions and just case the figures of the brom uh, rivers uh, plan forms and try to understand it how the secondary currents are happening how the plan forms are happening how the thallic line shiftings are happening and the cross section that's we should 
understand it looking the river plan form. Now if you look it many of the times we have the river and the tributaries are joining it. So you can have the depositions which is called the tributary bar formations. Like for example, if you look at these cases, okay, two rivers are joining it and if you draw the streamlines and all the flow will come like this, okay, flow will come like this. So there will be a erosions, the depositions, depositions also deter. So because of this joining the two alluvial rivers, both are feeding the sediments to this reach and there are the thalic line, the shifting of the channels. And because of that, there will be a erosions and the depositions and there will be a tributary mouth, depositions will happen it, also the tributary ones will be there. And because of so much erosions, depositions happens it, it will also create a mid channel bar, it will create the mid channel bar. If I take a cross sections, if I just take a cross sections, if you look at that A dash, B B dash and C C dash the three cross sections. If I look at that, the shape of the A is coming like this, okay. So, there is a thalic line, B B dash, there is a depositions, tributary bar formations, then this at the C C dash, you can see that mid channel depositions are happening. It. So, two channel formations are there. So, the tributaries, we can have a sometime middle cha channel bar formation. So, the tributary junctions can have a these conditions. So, we should try to understand how the flow sediments, the uh, erosions or depositions are happening it at the two confluences with the river and the tributary in alluvial zone. Not only that, uh, if you look at that, this is a confluencing and streamlining of confluences of both the streams. And uh, if you look at the like a Brahmaputra rivers also in the top you see it is not a one channels, it has a lot of sub meandering is there. Within the meanders there is a meanders, okay. So you can see the river in the top but at the bottom levels there are the sub meanders are happening it, which uh, if you do not have a, a cross section data uh, analysis properly we cannot find it. There are big, big smaller meanders are happening it. So it is quite interesting and quite to look at research study that how does it happen it, the manders and the sub manders and those sub manders how the morphologically they are active, whether these sub manders also accelerates the bank erosion process, does it the sub manders play a role for morphology, all the big questions still we do not have an answer for that because there is not much study has been done it for and these sub manders are visibles in Brahmaputra river in many part of the rivers stretches. That is the reason it is a still it is a complex rivers uh, morphologically to try to understand it how the compositions of manders, sub manders, the breedings are happening in this complex river. Before leaving this uh, lecture today, let me talk about the case study 1 which impact of the river interventions of alluvial channel morphology. So, we conducted a study and we published in uh, ISS Journal of Hydraulic Engineering in the last years. We try to look at what is the impact of Rangali Dam, the dam structures on the Brahmini river morphology. We try to look at first order analysis to do between upstream and downstream gauging stations. Second order analysis which look at these seasonal stream powers evaluations with the temporal variations of Bryce index and the cutoff length of a critical river reach. What we found is that if I do this flow durations and sediment durations curve analysis, the lean season discharge has increased 300 times, okay. Because of this Rangali dam, okay, the lean flow discharge has increasing trend, okay, that is is almost say 300 times, okay. The peak suspended load sediment concentration has decreased at the downstream reach, which expected because it is a reservoirs are there. So, because of the reservoir, the peak sediment sediment concentration has decreased the downstream reach, okay. The sediment decreases, the seasonal flow, flow is increasing trend, 
the flow is uh, increasing trend where is so you can have uh, these things and what is it with that the seasonal stream power analysis increasing trend of free monsoon stream to 56 or 300 watt per meters to 800 watt per meters so energy dissipation has increased okay three monsoon steam powers the plant forms alteration study shows that there is a breeding in sessions which is earlier is breeding index is 0.14 in 1975 it has gone to 2.33 in 0 2.2016 so well, almost 40 years after the 40 years the breeding index which is indicating the Bryce index which are indicating for us how much a river is breeding it that is what it happens earlier it is not a breaded rivers and it is going towards the breeding after the 40 years implementing this dam products and there is a cut off mid channel bar predominantly post dam periods. These are we are summarizing these things if you are interested you can refer to this paper next part how this uh, this is the upstream the sediment discharge and all not change much but there is a downstream if you look at the discharge and the flow distribution curve has changed it not only that it has significantly increased the Bryce index is 0 0.14 to 2.3 and you can visually look it how braided channel formations have in it and if you look at the cutoff length which is increasing still like this so that is the curve. So, river mandates to it is going to the braided forms. So, we, we should try to understand it faster or second order analysis because of the dam structures what we are creating it. We have done some interventions and that in one interventions how the river is responding that is uh, the questions we always should ask it and we should monitor the river at the different levels. Just let me conclude this lecture talking about that the watching the Brahmaputra river breeding is a truly a piece of art which we partly understood partly not understood it. Thank you very much for this lecture.